Good morning and welcome to our Easter Day service. Welcome to those uh, who are in the church hall, those in church here today, and those who will be watching uh, online and participating online. Uh, our service um, will be led at, at the, the start by John, and, and I'll take over. So I'm just going to uh, invite you over, John, now, if you'd like to. Good morning, everybody, and happy Easter. Easter. Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins, and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouth will proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord, oh, and praise to his name. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever, as once you ransomed your people from Egypt, and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness, and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day that you have made, and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We stand now and sing our first hymn, hymn number 271, Jesus Christ is risen today. <laughs>
and in what we have left undone. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in unit of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, <coughs> confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect of Easter Day. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, reading verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand now and sing hymn number 285. <coughs> the head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now.
second reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, beginning to read at verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wandering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles, but they did not believe the woman because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. I speak to God. God. We sing together hymn number 250. All hail the power of Jesus' name.
may I speak on this Easter day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning again, and happy Easter again. Um, and isn't it wonderful to start a service with the words, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Wonderful place for us uh, to start our worship this morning. I want to start this address maybe in a situation that you would all be quite familiar with in your own family homes. And it probably does depend a little bit maybe on your age. And um, this might be, uh, without being cheeky, this might be for the, the older ones of us. Um, because I often hear people joke about going upstairs at home and maybe arriving in the bedroom and then trying to remember why they went. <laughs> when they get there, they have forgotten just what they came for. And uh, you go looking and forget what you're looking for. Now, in our house, uh, and at this I'm saying it might be, uh, the younger end of the spectrum, uh, maybe something similar happens, but not quite the same that they, of course, don't forget what they're looking for. They go to the place that something left and they no longer find it there. Now, um, have you ever put something where it didn't belong and then you try to find it? Uh, I'm sure you have. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it happens in many a house. And um, have you ever come home and, uh, and if you're a child, uh, and you've been to school and you're excited to be home. You've left your school bag, your shoes, and your coat all in a big pile, just as near to the door as you can physically get shot of them. Uh, I imagine you have. I actually do it myself still, and I'm not a child. <laughs> uh, I come in, coat off, come in the back door, coat off, uh, church keys, house keys, car keys, wallet, phone, everything's just dumped in the kitchen, kitchen table and hanging over, coat maybe over the back of the chair and the shoes uh, under the table. And I'm sure I'm not alone. Uh, there a little bit later when you have to go out again, maybe a friend invites you out if you're a child, or maybe you've got a swimming lesson or a music lesson, or you've got football to go to, and uh, you're, you're running to the place where you left all your stuff. It's, it's not there. Your stuff is no longer uh, all in the pile by the door. The hockey stick is disappeared. Um, if you're like me, this comes as an amazing surprise. Even though it happens ever so frequently, the surprise absolutely never diminishes. And you know, and you think to yourself, where's my stuff gone? And uh, someone, and you all know who, will have put your stuff where it's meant to be. Isn't that right? Someone was gonna have put your stuff, and if your child is likely to be a parent, and the stuff is all put away where it belongs. Now, Usually after the surprise, I find my coat hanging up in the wee hall at the back of the rectory and I find my numerous bunches of keys doing the same on another wee rack, nicely tidied away and, uh, and I know, uh, and maybe my shoes are moved on too and just before uh, you left something where someone doesn't mean, just because you've left something where, where uh, somewhere where, where, where it shouldn't be, it doesn't mean that that's the, the right place for it to be. And that's my, my point here this morning. Just because you've left something somewhere doesn't mean that's the right place uh, where it's meant to be. Now, I, I have mentioned someone putting stuff where it belongs uh, because um, that's the same thing I think that actually happens in our scripture today. And uh, wait, wait till you hear where I'm going with this. In the story, we hear the disciples, they knew where Jesus' body had been buried. Because uh, on Good Friday, they had gone and taken it to 
uh, to be buried in the tomb. So on Sunday morning, they went to where they had left his body so that they could better prepare it uh, for his final burial. Because the Sabbath, the day between the Saturday, the Sabbath was a day when the Jews didn't work uh, or did, didn't do any work. So they needed to come back on the Sunday morning. So except when they arrived at the place where they last left Jesus' body, it wasn't there. When they looked inside the tomb, they had the biggest surprise of all. And, you know, on, on, uh, on levels of surprise, that's got to be out of this world, hasn't it? The tomb was empty, and they thought someone must have stolen Jesus' body. This is what it says in the opening of that passage of Scripture. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared, and they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. The disciples were confused and upset by Jesus' missing body. But this confusion and surprise, and I would dare say horror, takes us to the most amazing part of the story. Because it turns out that being buried wasn't where Jesus belonged. Now, and that, and that is the amazing part of the story. It's not where Jesus belonged. And uh, if, you, if you read on in the, in the passage, while they were wandering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them in their fright. The woman bowed down and their, uh, with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, and this is the key bit, why do you look for the living among the dead? Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee. That is totally amazing, isn't it? They didn't remember all that we read in the latter part of that reading. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be, uh, be raised again. That's what Jesus had told them before. And the surprise is so evident there. This is also why the angels tell the disciples, why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not there. Since that very first Easter morning, people have debated that question, as you can imagine, because uh, yeah, you're part of a, a, a community in Northern Ireland that is, is Christian uh, historically, and that debate has, has gone on in and through society, when the claims of Jesus have been put out there, and, and are put out there, and when asked about the resurrection. But here's a very answer uh, to questions about the resurrection and it's that verse why do you look for the living among the dead Jesus is not here but has risen one thing that's pretty easy to understand about the resurrection is that in order to see the resurrected Jesus you must look in the right place just like I was talking about going looking for those things that you dump at the door you have to look at the right place. And the scripture tells us that the tomb is going to be empty. Today's gospel reminds us that the place to look for the resurrected Jesus is not in the empty tomb, it is among the living. Like here, right here, among us on this Sunday morning in Macragall, it's the place to be looking for the Son of God. One of the reasons that we gather for worship on Sundays not just this Sunday, but all Sundays, is to remind each other that Jesus is among us, among the living. And that's why the last two years have been so painful for us as Christians, because we haven't been able to come together and to remind each other that Jesus is among us, among the living. That's why there's such great joy last Sunday when our Sunday school resumed. That's why after those long breaks uh, in 2020 and 2021, when we came together, there is so much joy in being God's people in this place. It's to remind us that Jesus is among us. He's among the living. 
In church and in Sunday school and our jam, we learn together about who Jesus was. We learn together Sunday by Sunday who our Lord and Saviour is. We learn that Jesus followed the direction of God. He followed that direction even to death on a cross. We learn to follow the example of Jesus and to follow the direction of God for ourselves when we come together as his children in this place. Jesus summarized that direction when answering another question in Matthew 22. And let me just uh, say a brief word about that. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus was asked. And Jesus gives his direction for his life and for our life when he replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. When we start following the direction of Jesus, an amazing thing starts to happen. We start to see how the things that Jesus taught are alive and they're growing in us and in our lives. We see the love of Jesus in our church family and then into our community. We see the peace of Jesus in our church family and then out into the world. We see the forgiveness of Jesus in our church family and then out into the world. We see the gentleness of Jesus and the goodness of Jesus manifest in his children here and now. And then we see that uh, being taken out into the world. We see the kindness of Jesus. And that is the good news for today. Jesus is alive and he's alive among the living. He is with us. Those wonderful words from the Bible today. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. He has risen and he is risen. Why are you looking for him among the dead? He's not here, he has risen. Thanks be to God for his word on this Easter day. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, that he followed your direction in life. We thank you that we can come together to follow his direction as he followed you. Help us, Father, to follow and to see the living Christ alive in our church uh, community, in our church family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our hymn now is hymn number 263. Crying him with many crimes, the Lamb upon his throne.
and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? I believe, I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Christ is risen and the power of his risen resurrection fills the world today with new life, hope and expectation. And so we bring him all our needs. Faithful God, we think of your church today celebrating the resurrection all over the world. Language, race and nationalities may be different, but our worship and our joy in the day of resurrection makes us one in the gospel. We pray that the Holy Spirit may guide and strengthen us in our mission and service, praying that day by day we may grow in love for you and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we pray for the leaders of the nations of the world, that they may give priority to those with greatest need in the distribution of the world's basic resources. We pray, especially on this day, for peace in the world, and for countries where there is war and conflict. We remember today those in the Ukraine and we pray for peace and an end to that war. And we also remember the people in Jerusalem where three world religions meet in one city. And we pray, Father, for peace in that holy city. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, at this joyful Easter time, we pray for our families and friends, especially for those joining us during the Easter holidays. We thank you for the joy of sending and receiving Easter gifts and cards and messages of love. Thank you for all the, the ways in which we can now communicate, which bring our loved ones so close, even when we are separated by great distances. And we remember those that are far from us at this time, those whom we love, uh, but we can't be physically with. And we thank you for that love and those relationships. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. And Creator God, we pray for those who are in need and ask you to look with pity on those who suffer. We pray for the brokenhearted, for the sick, for the lonely, that your presence would comfort them in their time of need. We especially pray for those within our parish who have asked for our prayers and uh, we remember Ian uh, in hospital and we remember all those uh, from our church community in hospital on this Easter day. We pray Father for uh, their healing at this time. We also remember and pray for those who walk in the shadow of death. We remember those who are bereaved. And in the week past, we remember um, Margaret Malcolm's family. We also remember Hunter's, baby Hunter's family. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, we remember those who have died throughout this year and pray that the promise of new life, won for us all by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, will bring comfort to all those who mourn. And in the moments of quietness, let's offer up to God our own particular prayers as we remember those that have gone before us. Father, we thank you for the resurrection of your Son and the promise of a joyful reunion. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And faithful God, as we go out into the word, world, we pray that we may reflect your love in our families, our church, and our community, so that the world can witness that we are followers of Jesus and draw others into his loving care. Merciful Father, merciful, merciful Father, Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. from church, may I wish you all uh, the joy of the resurrection and the promise that comes uh, in and through it, from the life in all its fullness in this world and the next. Let's sing together, Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son. Thank you.